Hello and welcome back. In the previous lecture we added the ground to our scene and modified its appearance to turn it into a customized floor. Now, depending on the type of a virtual experience that you'd like or need to design, this could be all you need as a starting point for your scene, because some principles of a graphic design and web design are still valid in VR. In particular I'm talking about white or a negative space, that in this case corresponds to the void in the 3D environment. A good example for this are dioramas, that are three-dimensional representations of fictional situations, nature scenes or historical time periods in a small space. And so let's say that you'd like or need to create a diorama-style virtual experience. By using a limited portion of ground and turning the void in the scene to your favor, you'll be able to focus the attention of the viewer on the main subject, and we'll have a look at how to load and display 3D models in the next lectures. But now let's go back to our scene, as in this lecture we are going to further customize the virtual environment by modifying the sky. And to do so I'll start by adding the A sky primitive. And then I'm going to reference this clear sunny sky image that I created in Photoshop. I copy and paste the image ID. And uh, let's have a look at our scene. Well, we now have the sky and also a problem because in terms of user experience here we are putting the user in a not so pleasant situation. In VR indeed the users are scared of heights, like they don't enjoy to be placed too close to pointed objects or constrained in very small spaces, unless of course you are designing something that has to be like that, let's say a kind of an action or thrilling or horror VR experience. But at the moment this is not our case. So, before we can improve the look and feel of our virtual environment, let's have a closer look at the A-Sky primitive. That, like the a curved image primitive, is just a basic mesh with some default settings. In particular, under the hood our sky is a sphere with a default radius of 5000 meters and with a texture mapped to the inside. So, if I attach the radius attribute and set its value to 5 meters, We end up with a sphere that has a 10 meter diameter and the same size of our ground. I'm going to attach the side attribute as well, setting its value to double uh, so we can see the sphere from both sides. Therefore, once we set the A sky primitive back to its default value, what we need to do to create a seamless horizon is uh, give the A-plane primitive the same size of the sphere diameter's default value, that is 10,000 meters. So first I'm going to undo the changes to the sky, and reload the page, and then I move on to the ground, so scale 10,000, and I also modify the values of both the repeat and normal text to repeat properties accordingly, therefore a 5000. And I reload the page again. Well, the horizon looks perfect. And now we need to deal with the alignment of the sky texture that at the moment doesn't match the position of the default light source in our scene. So I attach the rotation component to the A-Sky primitive and start rotating the texture in a positive direction around the Y-axis. 30, 60, 65, and I guess 64 is uh, what we need. Ok, we have now customized our scene, creating a nice horizon and aligning the sky texture to the light source. But in terms of UX, again, what they said about constraining the user in very small spaces is also true when we create very large and open spaces. 
and in such a virtual environment I can definitely perceive a bit of desolation and loneliness that in some users uh, could even turn into agoraphobia and this is something that you don't want for your VR projects. So in this case you have more than one option available. Since the scene is empty of course you could add other 3D objects or since in such an open environment uh, this uh, never-ending floor doesn't look natural you could use a more appropriate texture for the ground like uh, grass, dirt or uh, sand to reproduce either a field or a desert in your scene. But in the end these are all choices that depend on what you are designing. In example you could use no texture at all for the ground but a plain color if you are creating a VR experience in a cartoonish style. And to show you the result, first I modify its comment, then I create a copy of it, I remove the textures and modify its color. And then I reload the page so we can see the changes. And now, since the A-plane primitive has still been affected by the lighting conditions, when I modify its material component and set the shader property to flat, we don't have that unpleasant feeling of desolation anymore thanks to the cartoonish style we decided to go for. Or finally, as a more advanced technique, you could add lights to your scene and modify them to focus the attention of the user on specific subjects in your scene the same way they do in other arts like photography, theater or movies. But we'll have a look at how lights work in a frame later on in this course. And I'm going to conclude this lecture with uh, 360 degrees images. So first I'll comment all the objects. And reload the page. And then to create a 360 degrees panorama in your scene, you can still use the A-Sky primitive. And all you have to do is reference a 360 degrees image, like this one, that I downloaded from texturify.com, where you can find a nice collection of environment panoramas that you can download and use for free, but just make sure that you respect their terms of use. So, back to our live preview. I copy and paste the image ID and then enter VR mode to have a look at our scene. Which looks beautiful. So this is how you can modify the virtual environment in a frame, customizing both the ground and the sky in your scene, and I'll see you in the next lecture.